doing tonight? Long time no see. Emerald Lagasse here. Welcome to Emerald Live. Just a little Spanish, you know, see? <laughs> I think the only thing that people know about Bengal, India is the Bengal Tigers or the Cincinnati Bengals. <laughs> Heard that before, huh? <laughs> Incredible. It's a mad, it's just a miracle how our minds, you know, it's kind of like we've been there, huh? <laughs> but the uh, Bengali culture is so closely tied, really and truly, to food, particularly a lot of vegetarian food and great seafood. Surrounded and protected by the Himalaya Mountains and also the, the Bengal Bay or the Bay of Bengal. There's some rivers and things like that. It's some of the most fertile land in that part of the world. And on a recent poll on foodnetwork.com, we had an overwhelmingly amount of requests for Indian and Indian-inspired dishes, as well as vegetarian. So we're going to give you a little of both tonight. There is a wide variety of vegetables there. And so tonight, we're going to do a Bengal dal, which is really what legumes are called. And we're going to do that with eggplant fritters. Really delicious. Wait till you see this. Then I told you there's lots of water with the Bay of Bengal, lots of seafood. So we're going to do a lobster dish with fried onions. Oh, yeah, babe. Oh, yeah. And uh, dairy is based, you know, really a lot of their desserts are, are, are based on dairy. So I'm going to show you a very unique thing that we're going to do with a, a little condensed milk, and we're going to, well, you'll see what we're going to do. And then we're going to poach it sort of in some rose water syrup that's really terrific. I'm really quite excited. Do you know why? Why? Do you know why? Why? Doc Gibbs and the Emerald Live Band! <laughs> All right. Hey, it's a taste of Bengal tonight, right here on Emerald Live. Doc Gibbs. All right. Hey, how you doing, folks? Long time no see. How are you? How are you? Hi, wonderful. How you doing? Good. All right. Well, um, lots of vegetables, lots of unusual spices, which kind of uh, makes this kind of a food that I really love and adore. It's very unique, the combinations that they use and the style of it. Chickpeas very popular there. And uh, this is sort of like a chickpea. You would think that they're actually like split peas. They look like split peas, but they're really like a chickpea. And let me show you, this is the first part of what they call dal. That's what they call legumes. And what we're going to do is, in some water, I've soaked these, preferably for about a half an hour to an hour. And you might want to sort through them to make sure there's no little stones or pebbles. Another part of why you should rinse them. And they don't really take a long time to cook. Like if we were to cook white beans to make baked beans or white beans or whatever, you know, you're looking at a, maybe a two-hour process. A lot of the legumes cook very, very quick. In the water goes the dal. And now the flavoring. A little salt. A cinnamon stick, clove, cinnamon and clove used a lot in their spices, as well as cardamom. And I have some ground cardamom here, very unique flavors. A little turmeric, which gives it nice color and a little bit of flavor. And just a little pinch or so of some sugar. Stir it around. You don't want it to get all clustered together. Bring it up to a boil, turn the heat down, say like medium heat, 
cover it, let it cook. It's going to take about 10, no more than 15 minutes. Now, in a lot of these legume dishes, if the water evaporates, they start getting thick, don't panic. You can just add a little bit more water to that or a vegetable stock, etc. So this is the dal that's happening right here. Now, eggplant. Oh, yeah, babe. What we're going to do is take the ends of an eggplant off here. And what we're going to do is, I said that they were fritters, but actually they're sort of what I would call more as a fritter. Like I consider like clam cakes or beignets like more fritterish, corn fritters. So, but these are what, oh yeah, babe. But these are considered what they call fritters, but I think they're batons, more like batons. Let me show you what they look like. We're going to cut about three quarters of a, an inch of these. And what we'll do is, you can either leave the skin on or off. We're going to cut these sort of, like what I said, batons, or these sticks, if you will, eggplant sticks. Whoa. <laughs> Somebody's been playing with my knives. <laughs> and what you do is you cut the entire eggplant up, and you see I have like a little basket like this. And what you like to do and they do is take salt, they salt the eggplant, and they'll let that sit like that for about a, an hour to two hours. And theory is, is that it absorbs whatever bitterness is inside of the eggplant. I don't find a lot of eggplants bitter, but this is a good way if you do and have salt it, and what it will do is begin to start letting off some moisture. I've done that earlier. You may think that it looks discolored from the looks at this, but this is basically the technique. And then what they do is they rinse this lightly in a little bit of water, and then I'll take these batons, put them between some paper towels or cloth towels, and then what they'll do is they, they press them not mush them, but they press them. And they'll expose some of that green color again. So, we have the doll working. See, watch, we'll just take this little technique like this and we'll just sort of press them. And they'll start getting like leathery in a good way. And the color so we'll let that, we're just getting all that moisture out of there, you see, as we're pressing them. Okay? So we'll let them sit. The doll is working. When we come back, I'll show you what it looks like. Stick around. Doc Gibbs, everybody! <laughs> in the Emerald Live Band, folks. <laughs> Master Cliff on the keyboards, right. Lewis Teddy on drums, and of course, Doc Gibbs. Yeah. Welcome back, Emerald Lagasse, cooking up the cuisine of Bengal tonight. Quite excited about it at that. The dal, almost ready. Now I'm gonna show you how we're gonna finish this. Oh, I'm going to add a little bit more salt now that they're beginning to start cooking a little bit. The eggplant batons. Pressed. Everything all right back there, folks? <laughs> and now what we're going to do is I have some vegetable oil at about 360 degrees. I sifted my flour to aerate the flour a little bit. Kind of makes it a little poofy. To the flour, I'm going to add turmeric, cayenne pepper. 
Oh, they use a lot, a lot of spice, a lot of chilies. Love that. And, of course, a little bit of salt. <laughs> Sounds personal. <laughs> Anyhow, now we're going to mix that, those ingredients, the spices in there. And then what we're going to do, folks, is this. We're going to take and dredge those batons. Then I'm going to show you how to finish the doll. <laughs> the best way that I like to do this is to just kind of use that sifter again. What happens with most frying is they'll put all that excess flour in the oil. Then it kind of like breaks the oil down and gets nasty quick. All right, so we're going to fry them. While those are in the fryer, let's talk about how you finish the doll. <laughs> now, be back. Oh, yeah, babe. We're going to lower this. Smells good, doesn't it? All right, and let me show you how. Quick little story. I've got four ingredients that are going to go into this thing to finish it in this little pan. And then it gets served with rice, which is an everyday staple, bingo. Use a lot of rice, eat a lot of rice, love rice. But to finish this, they do a hot mustard oil, which is this here. But I got to tell you a quick story. Years and years ago when I was at Commander's Palace, it was always a mystery to me why for a while we never used mustard oil a lot of old Creole dishes, particularly like shrimp remoulade, some of the remoulades and stuff, they use mustard oil. And then, of course, we're using Creole mustard. To make a long story short, I've, I found out why. One afternoon, one of the cooks coming down from the mezzanine accidentally slipped, and the bottle of mustard oil fell out of his hands and broke. And they had to evacuate the building because it's like a gas, this stuff. Like a... I'm serious. So... This is heavy-duty stuff, so don't, it's like crab boil. Don't, uh, don't drop it. <laughs> All right, the eggplant's coming along great. So here's what we do. We take chili pepper. I'm using a little jalapeno. Cumin. Crushed red pepper. Okay? And then what we're going to do... It's like kryptonite. <laughs> Then what we're going to do is add that hot mustard oil. Shh. Now you're going to start smelling this. You may even tear up. Oh, you should smell it. All right, what we're going to do, take the eggplant, Take it out of the hot oil. Remember, season it as soon, anything that you fry, season it as soon as it comes out. A little, little salt. You're tearing up? <laughs> and here's what we do. We take that hot, cumin, chili, red pepper, mustard oil. Oh, right inside of here to finish it. And you stir that in. Cut the heat off. Oh. All right, I'm ready. What we'll do is we'll take the doll with that delicious, hot, serve that right here. A little rice. <laughs> Oh. 
Oh, yeah, babe. And then, a little bit of the fried eggplant. Little batons or fritters, as they call them. And there you have it, folks. Just a classic, classic dish right there. Fantastic. So excited. Hey, when we come back, guess what? Another night. Stick around. Back in. Welcome back, everybody. Emma Lagasse here. Cuisine of Bengal tonight. And uh, dal. A little cilantro sometimes on that, the eggplant. And uh, I, I didn't find it too spicy. I found it a little nice taste. <laughs> I've had it where it's blown your head off. Just, or they eat a lot of hot food, a lot of spicy food. This uh, next dish is a, an inspiration from the Bay of Bengal, where they eat a lot of fish in their diets in the cuisine. Fish to them in Bengal is like a steak in Texas. A lot of fish. Some shellfish. And a great dish that I want to share with you tonight as an inspiration from Bengal, and that's a lobster with fried onions. First thing we're going to do in a stock pot big enough for how many lobsters you're going to cook, water, the old H2O, and then what we're going to do is we're going to flavor that water sort of like a court bouillon with onions, celery, and carrots. Now, that's a universal maripois. In Bengal, in Paris, in New Orleans, in New York, in cooking universal maripois for stocks, for soups. To that, we add peppercorns, about three or four garlic cloves that has been smashed. And interesting enough, the juice of at least a lemon, at least an orange, and then, actually, I'm going to kick up the uh, lemon program a little. Yeah. I'm going to add the juice of two lemons, and I'm going to add the rind in here as well for the oil. Simple herbs, little parsley, maybe cilantro, which they also call coriander, a little thyme, and bay leaf. OK. With me so far? OK. Now, the only thing missing, obviously, is we need to add a little bit of salt. And as I told you earlier, the use of cayenne pepper, chilies, it's incredible there. This is cayenne. Oh, yeah, man. <laughs> and then we're going to add a little bit of white wine. Now, once this starts coming up to temperature, what we're going to do is we're going to start poaching a couple of lobsters, okay? So I've got uh, one and a half pound lobsters or so, and um, I'm going to start adding them in here. I want to cook them for about five minutes, no more than six minutes, okay? So the lobsters are going to go in. Oh, relax. <laughs> now, with this particular dish, not only are we going to use the lobster meat, but the incredible dish is using the shells and making this incredible sauce that goes with this, which I'm going to show you. But first, two types of onions in this preparation. A little bit of oil, 
So I'm just using vegetable oil. In this skillet, which is going to be, I got a little lower, we're going to use diced onion here. And I got that just on medium heat. This one here, what we're going to do, sliced onion. We're going to use this, which is going to be the incredible, what I call accoutrement or garnish to this lobster dish. Okay? With me so far? Yeah. A little salt and pepper. <laughs> Thank you. Now, diced onions starting for the sauce. Sliced onions for the garnish. The lobsters are cooking in this court bouillon that's got a lot of flavor. When we come back, I'll show you what we're going to do next. Stick around. Back in. Gibbs and the MLI Band. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. If you just joined us, Emeril Lagasse here, and we're doing a little taste of Bengal tonight. Now, I want to make sure everybody's with me on this dish, especially you. <laughs> the lobsters are in. They've been in a couple of minutes, not quite done yet. What I have done, though, I told you that the shells will be important this liquid's going to be important. So, five or six minutes, what I've done is set up an ice bath when we take them out of here to shock them so that they don't cook anymore, okay? Then we're going to strain this liquid and start reducing it and reducing it down. So the evaporation happens, when that happens, the concentration of flavors happen, and that's what we're going to use later for the little bit of the sauce. You with me so far? Yeah. What a group. <laughs> the sliced onions, once they get nice and caramelized and really good and golden brown, which will happen before this dish is done, don't panic. You take them out, just keep them on a little pan. When we're ready later for the dish, we can blast them always in the oven to rewarm them for the dish. But we want to get them nice and caramelized. The thing that happens with caramelizing onions, whether it's for onion soup or a dish like this, people try to do it too fast. They just jack up the stove to like, you know, it's going to go through the roof. Easy. It's a food of love thing. It's like medium, medium, high heat. And we're going to start caramelizing them. Meanwhile, the diced onion, as you can see, we've got some color going on. That's going to be for the sauce. Okay? To the onion, we're going to add very, very, I told you about the assortment of spices. We're going to add ginger. We're going to add garlic. Yeah. We're going to cook that for about 30 seconds. Now, to that, smell that already? Yeah. Now, to that, we're going to add ground coriander. Cardamom seeds, paprika, cayenne pepper, some turmeric, cinnamon stick, some fennel. They also use a lot of fenugreek and cumin. Now you're probably saying, wow, that's a lot of spices. That's, that's what makes this very special, very tasty, is the assortment of 
the different spices. Now, we're going to let that cook and sort of toast for a little bit. And then what we're going to do now is take out our lobsters. Oh, yeah, babe. We're just going to give them a little ice bath like that. Now, a lot of times, folks, what I'll do is I'll do the lobster thing earlier or even the day before, okay? And then I let this really cook this first for a good hour and a half and just suck out all the love of those onions and the carrots and the celery and just the spices that we got in there. That makes it more flavorful than if we strained it right now and then we reduced it. Are you with me there? Yeah. So that's another, that's a great option of doing that. Once we strain it and reduce it, then what happens is it looks like this. It's like a lobster stock. I even sometimes what I'll do is I'll, when I clean the lobster, I'll put the shells back inside of this, cook that for a good hour and a half, really get all that flavor going before I strain it, okay? Like I did with this one here. Now, once the spices get toasty, then we add some tomato. I wish you could smell this. Well, we can't hear. You poor folks at home should call your local cable company and, and just demand you get smell-o-vision tomorrow. Now, once that cooks for a little bit, folks, about just a couple minutes, then we're going to add about a quart of that reduced lobster stock, and we're going to let that evaporate. So much love going on right now in here. It's like unbelievable. All right. What I want to show you now, this here is what it looks like when that is reduced. About 20 minutes is what this stage. See this here to here? This is about 20 minutes now to this stage. And it has got packed full of flavor. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add cilantro, chopped parsley, and we're going to add just a little bit of cream to cream this up here. Now, you bring this up to temperature just until the oil will start coming to the top of this. And a lot of that is not because of the milk or the cream, not because of the stock, it's because of all of the aromatics in the spices that we toasted are starting to come to the top and is making this thing so happy you can't believe it, okay? Now, when we come back, I'm gonna show you what this incredible lobster dish with onions, fried onions. Stick around, we'll be right back, Doc Gibbs. Smelling incredible here. Happy, happy. I lowered our lobster sauce. And you can see what I was talking about. See how that oil, a little bit of that separation from all the aromatics in there? Then the onions, we cooked them down to they were like really crisp, cam caramelized, not burnt. That's why we had that heat just. We'll take the lobster, and to clean the lobster, those of you that will take these out here. And as I said earlier, the shell and the body of the lobster is really what you want to use for the 
sauce that's reducing here that we got the cream in that in. The best way that I find to get the tail meat out of the shell, I just sort of crack it into each other like this. And then I just take the tail pot off for the sauce. And then I just sort of open it up and that tail pot slides right off here. See? Again, we'll save that for the sauce. And then as far as the knuckle, which is, this is what's considered the knuckle part of it and the claw part of it. I usually separate them here and then put some of that juice right in there. Shh. Shh. Oh, I'm happy. <laughs> Just take that out. See all the incredible water. You know, recently I was in Boston at, all right, at the, uh, the Hook Family Lobster Company there and uh, found out something very interesting that, you know, summer, in the summertime, see how I'm doing this here? Summertime, we'll just take that claw meat right out of there. Oh, yeah, babe. All right, let's clean this clean this up and let's move on so I want to show you how this is going to end up here now. First of all, when I get to this stage, I'm going to crank the heat. I've got some rice made. I'm going to add a little bit of butter to this. And uh, I don't waste. See all this great juice and a little bit of that tamale? <laughs> oh, yeah, baby going to slide the board out here and just kind of get those juices flowing. We'll add that right in there. Now, we'll take the tail meat, just kind of chunk it up. Now, you can buy lobster meat already cooked. You can also buy the shells, and that way you can just make the sauce when you want. Expediate the process if that's how you want to go about it. I think what we'll do is we'll leave these claws fairly big. Yeah, let's leave them like that. In they go. Just want to, the lobster meat is cooked. We just want to do this Bengal style, the sauce going over the meat. Oh. Killing me. Matter of fact, I can't stand it anymore. There is so much love in here. So many different spices. Let's just get to it. To finish it up, folks, you can use that as a little garnish. Yeah. Hello. As I said, always with rice, and a little spoon of that finished lobster right over like that. Oh, you're playing with my emotions. <laughs> One little claw like that. And then simply, folks, what they do is just garnish it with cilantro and then those crispy fried onions. And there you have it, folks. A little lobster with onion sauce. Incredible. Show you a dessert. The start of the show, I uh, 
I said that we we're going to make this, dirt with, uh, this dessert with condensed milk. My, my mind was down in the bayou somewhere. It's actually with dry milk. Check this out. We're going to make a syrup first with water, sugar, a few cardamom, and then this stuff, which is called rose water. I make some drinks with this, too. Well, if you're into that. <laughs> We're going to let that sugar dissolve. I'm going to take the dry milk, sift it, flour, little baking powder, and some cardamom. Sift it. You're making like a little dough. See? Little pinch of salt. G. Butter. Okay? We're going to just sort of work that. Just like we were making a pie dough. How you doing, Rhoda? The lobster's killing you, isn't it? It's killing me, too. So once that comes together, just like I said, just like a pie dough, then what we're going to do now is make the dough, and they roll and form these little balls. Let's add about, start with a tablespoon of cold water. If it takes more, we can always add more. Should come to a dough. Oh, that's some dough music by Doc Gibbs. So you see how it's coming together now as a dough? When you can shape them, you form them into these like little marble size little balls like this. Okay? Oh yeah, wait. <laughs> now, here's what happens. These here, we formed, see like these little marbles? And it's with dry milk. In the skillet right here, I've got clarified butter, or G. We're gonna start frying these in the clarified butter, okay? When we come back, oh, have I got a treat for you. Stick around, Doc Gibbs. Sure, not to get these too dark. Once you put them in the clarified butter, we're going to take them out. Once the sugar dissolves in that rose water syrup, what you do is you take these when they cool a bit. We're going to put them right inside of the syrup. And then you turn the heat off and you let them get happy. <laughs> they get cool and they get happy about two minutes. When you get to that point, you got this wonderful rose water flavored syrup. And what happens is that they begin to puff because they're filling with syrup, you see? Well, what we'll do is we take a few of these out. Serve them like this on the plate. 
Now it's kind of like, almost like a sponge kind of cake. You can save the syrup for other things. And I just sort of dust them with a little powdered sugar like this. And then I just take some edible organic flowers, which are quite popular, have been for years, and I just take them off the petals. And then I just decorate the plate like that in the Bengal style. Fantastic. It's been a lot of fun. I want to thank you all for joining me tonight. I'm Emerald Lagasse. See you tomorrow, everybody.